that's what he's doing. Right, okay. okay. Yep, okay. Um, obviously, I'll Where say, about your arm? Um, a little bit more complicated. Upstairs, there were about five wardrobes. Yep. I did know that this would kind of come eventually. Um, it's proper that I serve my punishment. On the 19th of June, 2019, Virginia McCulloch poisoned her 70-year-old father, John McCulloch, a retired business studies lecturer with prescription medication that she crushed and put into his alcoholic drinks. She then hid his body in a makeshift tomb, covered with blankets and paintings. A day later, on the 20th of June, 2019, she beat her 71-year-old mother, Lois McCulloch, with a hammer and fatally stabbed her. Virginia then stashed her mother's body behind sleeping bags and duvets in an upstairs wardrobe. Conveniently for her, the country was about to enter enforced lockdowns due to COVID-19, so Virginia was easily able to conceal their bodies within the home at Pump Hill in Great Baddo. Over the next four years, she continued to live at the address, telling lie after lie to cover her tracks and avoid raising suspicion. But in 2023, her lies eventually caught up with her, and Virginia McCulloch was arrested and charged with her parents' murder. Cheer off, at least you caught the bad guy. I'm just I know I don't think I've done my job. No. I know it's not a lot. It's an evil, but we all. Yeah, not I, I'm not going to comment on anything. It's not my job to comment on it, no. okay? Because I've got to be impartial with everything, okay? So I'm not going to give any comments. No, no. Well, I mean, I deserve to obviously uh, get whatever's coming sentence-wise because that's the right thing um, to do, and that might give me a bit of peace. Before murdering her parents, Virginia had been living rent-free and taking advantage of their good hearts. In their minds, she was working hard to become an artist, but in reality, she was deep in debt and accruing large charges on her parents' credit cards. She forged letters to trick them into thinking they had lost money through scams, when in reality, she was taking their money. After cruelly murdering her parents, she continued to accumulate large debts on their credit cards and spent their pensions. Over the next four years, she lived in the home with her parents' bodies hidden away, spending a total of almost £150,000. She cancelled family arrangements and meetups, frequently telling doctors and relatives that her parents were unwell, on holiday, or away on lengthy trips. Virginia made 185 calls to the GP surgery, including calls in which she pretended to be her mother. The country was also under COVID-enforced lockdowns, for a significant period, making it easier for her to keep her parents' bodies hidden. Virginia sent texts, using her dead mother's phone to her siblings and sent gift cards to them in Lois's name. She also refused all invitations from family to catch up or meet. However, there were a few moments when people noticed some strange behavior coming from Virginia. One day, a man named Alan Thompson rented a television to the couple. When Virginia called him to abruptly cancel the rental on her parents' behalf, Alan's staff arrived at the home to pick up the television. Virginia told them they could not enter the property and that the television was already prepared by the front door. Paul Hastings, a greengrocer at the shop near their home, was concerned when Lois and John stopped coming to his store. However, Virginia then told him that her parents were no longer living in the area. Members of the community noted that Virginia acted strangely during those four years, mentioning that she would be seen in a shop four times a day before disappearing for the next fortnight. Virginia also pretended to be pregnant, creating a fake bump under her clothing. Her neighbor claimed that Virginia had a dark sense of humor and that her curtains were always drawn. Finally, concerns for Lois and John's welfare were raised in September 2023 by a GP at their registered practice. The GP had not seen the couple for some time and noted that John had failed to collect his medication and attend scheduled appointments. The GP informed Essex County Council's safeguarding team about his concerns and this was subsequently referred to the police. A missing persons investigation was initially launched, and Virginia lied to the officers, claiming that her parents were traveling and would be returning in October 2023. Due to the officers' suspicions, the case was deemed a murder inquiry, and the police executed a warrant to enter and search the family home on Pump Hill. Got 
Okay. This one. On the 15th of September 2023, Essex police rammed through the back door of the property on Pump Hill and immediately located the 36-year-old. Virginia was placed in handcuffs and immediately cooperated. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh. The time is 12 12. You're under arrest suspicion of murder against. Jonathan McCulloch and Lars McCulloch. Yeah, okay. okay. She doesn't say anything, but it may harm defence. She did not mention when questioned. So I just want anything to do so. Okay. Is there anything in the public we should know about? Yes, there is. Can I take you to it? No, you can tell me. Uh, can we go in there for a second? Just so I can tell you something. Yeah, yeah. 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 I need to tell you something about what's upstairs on the top floor as well. Yeah. 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 She led them into the kitchen and told them exactly where her parents were. Oh, my dad's body is in there. Right, okay, okay. Yep, okay. Um, obviously, I'll Where say, about um, a little bit more complicated. Okay, so upstairs there are about five wardrobes. Yep. Um, it's behind the bed, but back next to the sink. That's the second one. She then proceeded to explain how she had murdered her father. Um, I slipped spider bows into his drink. There were about two or three drinks that I brought downstairs. Um, and yeah, they were basically, uh, he he didn't drink all of them. He only drank probably about half of two. But um, yeah, when I went in in the morning, this was before my mother, uh, when I went in the morning, early hours, I got up about half an hour early, about um, six o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. I uh, came in and he was gone. He was well, gone. Okay. It was, um, After giving a full account of what had happened, the police had her sign a statement confirming that it was all true which she willingly did. I did know that this would kind of come eventually. Um, it's proper that I served my punishment, so. Virginia, I just can ask you this. This is what I've written down based on the information you just told us, because what we regard as a significant comment, because yeah, you made it on, under caution yeah. after your arrest. By the way, part of, that's, they're my granddad's. Okay, right, so I've written this, please. Um, I, Virginia McCulloch, have, inf have informed police constables 77329Brown and 79387 at Bowers after entering my house on Friday the 15th of September 2023 that I murdered my father, John McCulloch, who was st stated was under a bed in the rear ground floor of the house and my mother upstairs in a cupboard next to the sink. Wardrobe. Okay. wardrobe. It's a double wardrobe. Right, okay, I've written double cupboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's significant as I've written down there here now, I've just read out to you. Are you happy to sign that to say that's a true, yeah. a true account? Yeah. She then tried to joke with the police, adding that she wasn't 100% evil. Yeah, well, I've at least you caught the bad guy. I've I know, I don't see him. I've done my job. No. I know, I don't see him. Not a lot. Eagle, but we all. <laughs> Yeah, not no, I'm not going to comment on anything, it's not my job to comment on it, no. okay, because I've got to be impartial with everything, okay, so I'm not going to give any comments. No, no, well, I mean, I deserve to obviously uh, get whatever's coming sentence-wise, because that's the right thing um, to do. And that might give me a bit of peace. Finally, she told them where a bank card was, admitting that she had spent a lot of her parents' money on it over the past few years. Also in the handbag as well, there's... Um, it, and again, because you're probably going to need to know about it, there's a card in there, um, mm -hmm. card one money, um, and um, that's a bank card where um, there's um, a lot of transactions that have taken place over the last few years uh, for the money that pertains to my parents. Virginia was then taken to the police station, where she told them about a kitchen knife, which she described as the murder weapon, and a hammer, which she said will still have blood on it. So, um, murder weapon is upstairs in the way the room, and a kitchen knife. It's in the middle of the brown carpet, um, against the wall, opposite the shelves. So there are two long white shelves, so opposite um, where that wall is. That's where uh, the knife is. So, um, next bit is very hard to talk about. That's probably the most grisly detail. Uh, so, on the um, ground floor, underneath the stairs, uh, there's a few like storage boxes and things. Uh, I think it's in one of the boxes or in a bag or something. The rule of one forensic it's helpful. There's a hammer. Uh, I know. I know. I know, but I'm, I'm trying to help so you find everything. It's in the middle underneath the stairs. It will still have blood on it. It's rusted, but it will still have blood traces on it. Virginia was taken to HMP Peterborough to await her trial.
Virginia McCulloch admitted to two counts of murder at Chelmsford Crown Court on the 4th of June 2024, and she was remanded in custody ahead of sentencing. Prosecutors applied for a whole life order to be imposed on her, rather than granting a minimum jail term as part of a life sentence. The prosecuting counsel said these were clearly premeditated killings. There was a plan B if plan A didn't work. This is a case of exceptionally high seriousness. She gave her father a cocktail of her prescription drugs crushed into alcoholic drinks that she gave him. She left him to die in his bedroom at the house and went to bed. She sedated her mother with a less strong cocktail. They went on to say that Virginia fatally attacked her mother the following morning. She put on a pair of gloves, struck her with a hammer and stabbed her eight times. They said, this was the culmination of thoughts and planning, which began in March 2019. Throughout her sentencing, Virginia stared at the floor, emotionless. It was only when the court listened back to her original interview with the police that she began to cry. In the police interview, she told the officers, she looked so innocent, she was just sat there listening to the radio. I did go in three times to build up some gumption, but I knew I had to get it done and can't hesitate. She was just staring at me in disbelief. She said afterwards she held her mother's hand and apologised. The prosecution went on to say the defendant was actively engaged in fraud and deception on her parents before the killings. The court heard how she ran up large debts on credit cards in her parents' names, and after their deaths, she continued to spend their pensions. A total of £135,998 of that amount came from their pensions, with a further £7,800 charged to their credit cards. Virginia lied about having a job, making her parents believe that she was not being paid for it. In an email to a friend, her mother Lois wrote, I do hope Jin gets her full salary. Keep your fingers crossed for us. Virginia was the youngest of John and Lois's five children, and her siblings saw her as socially awkward and a compulsive liar. Statements from her siblings were read to the court. One sibling wrote, Your lies about our parents' actions and their whereabouts made out as if they didn't value seeing us. You have left a hole in my heart forever, and a piece of me died with them the day you took them from us. Another wrote, to me, this situation is quite literally a living nightmare, from which I will never wake up. The haunting thoughts of whether my parents suffered if they were taunted. Another one said that they felt sick to their core every day, adding, We have been cruelly robbed of more loving memories and bonds with our mum and dad for years to come. How dare Virginia rob us of that life? So many lies have been told to cover the horrific truth that she had murdered our loving mum and dad. Lois's brother said, Virginia has spread many lies and stories to cover her murders. It undermines my faith in humanity. I still have letters sent to me. I know now some of the contact with what I believe to be Lois and John was not them. Some moments and conversations I believe I was having were not true. There are precious times with Lois and John I will miss out on because of the wicked act of their own daughter. Virginia is dangerous and my biggest fear is she will plan something, as she is manipulative and now has a lot of time to plan. The defence, on the other hand, started by saying, nothing I say is intended to detract from the loss of dear parents, grandparents and siblings. This is not a case where a whole life order is necessary or justified. Defence attorney Christine Agnew, KC, told the court that Virginia wanted them to know that she understood she must be punished for what she had done. The defence claimed that Virginia was not using her autism as an excuse for her actions, but that it did, in some way, explain them. She said that Virginia experienced paranoia and was self-harming at times while living at her parents' house. Christine Agnew stated that Virginia recognised she had hurt and damaged her siblings to such an extent that they were unlikely to recover. Christine added that Virginia had been cooperative, noting that she made full admissions to the offences from the moment police came to her front door. When sentencing took place on the 11th of October 2024, Virginia was told to stand and she showed no emotion. Judge Christopher Morgan stated that he was sure the offences involved a substantial degree of both premeditation and planning, adding that she spun and maintained an elaborate, extensive and enduring web of deceit over more than four years. 
He noted that over a period of three months, Virginia accumulated a large amount of prescription drugs, and in May 2019, she bought a knife as well as implements to crush and separate tablets. The judge said, these were considered acts of aggression following months of thought and planning. You drugged your father's drink two days before the murders in order to use him as a guinea pig. You had a primary plan to use the drugs for their deaths, and you had a backup plan to use weapons if the primary plan failed. You think more of money than you do of humanity. Your parents were entitled to feel safe in their own beds and their own home. They are entitled to feel safe with their own daughter. Her last conscious moment was the realization that you, her daughter, had launched a murderous attack on her. As he handed down the sentence, he said, there is a single sentence that can be passed upon you in these circumstances. Consideration, however, has to be given to the minimum term. He sentenced Virginia to life with a minimum term of 36 years. Mr. Justice Johnson stated that she would not serve a whole life order, citing her guilty pleas and admissions to the police as influencing his decision. Mr. Justice Johnson noted that, having served some time on remand, she had 34 years and 341 days until she could be considered for release as part of her life sentence for murder. Following the sentencing, outside the courtroom, Detective Superintendent Rob Kirby of Essex Police said, Virginia McCulloch murdered her parents in cold blood. Her actions were considered meticulous and carried out in such a way as to conceal what she had done for as long as possible. These were the actions of someone who had taken time to plan and carry out the murder of her parents in the interests of self-preservation and personal gain before living within metres of the bodies of her two victims for a number of years. Throughout the course of our investigation, we have built a picture of the vast levels of deceit, betrayal and fraud that she was engaged in. It was on a shocking and monumental scale. McCulloch lied about almost every aspect of her life, maintaining a charade to deceive everyone close to her and clearly taking advantage of her parents' goodwill. She is an intelligent manipulator who chose to kill her parents callously without a thought for them or those who continue to suffer as a result of their loss. It therefore follows that the wider family of John and Lois understandably could never have guessed or anticipated that McCulloch would be capable of undertaking these murders before committing herself to this level of deceit. They have been left utterly devastated by the circumstances of this case and they continue to feel the loss of John and Lois each and every day. John and Lois's family paid tribute to them in a statement and thanked the police for their work. They said, we would like to say a huge thank you to Essex Police and in particular the major investigation team for their tireless work in trying to achieve the best possible justice for our beloved parents. We would also like to thank other specialist services for their invaluable contribution to this investigation and to everyone who has supported our family over the last year. Our dad was caring and hardworking and he had a passion for education and writing. He worked tirelessly in his career in university education, which spanned many years. Dad enjoyed lots of hobbies, with particular favourites being golf and snooker. As we think of Dad, we remember the numerous jokes he used to tell us and the laughs he gave us. Our mum was kind, caring and thoughtful. Mum delighted in her grandchildren. She had friends from around the world through her pen friend hobby, many of whom she had written to for several decades. Mum had a passion for history and maintained a keen interest in the royal family. Mum and Dad loved their trips to the seaside together, where they enjoyed many walks and visited lots of different attractions. Their love for the seaside was so great, they were hoping to move to the coast in their retirement years. Mum and Dad always enjoyed the time they spent with us. Family was their pride and joy. Our family has been left devastated and heartbroken at the deaths of our parents who were taken from us so cruelly. As we try to move forward with our lives, we will remember the happy times we enjoyed with them. Our mum and dad are forever in our hearts and are loved and missed beyond any measure. Virginia's actions were cruel and selfish. She took advantage of her parents' kindness and love and brutally murdered them. She spread a web of lies that eventually caught up to her and she truly got what she deserved, a life sentence. 
My heart goes out to the couple's friends and family, and I hope the sentencing gives them some sense of closure. And as always, rest in peace, Lois and John McCulloch.